Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and welcome to another instalment in my series of A Month of Perennials. And today we're going to look at a cottage garden favourite, the Aquilegia. So welcome to my garden Dwensa and I'm here among the Aquilegias today so it's quite fitting that I talk to you about them. Now aquilegias are a firm favourite with anyone who's grown a cottage garden. They're quite common in the Northern Hemisphere and they have some really cool common names. So they are known as Columbine or Granny's Bonnet. And actually if you look closely at an aquilegia flower you can see why. Now I'm not sure whose granny ever wore a bonnet like that. I think the common name dates from you know a time a little bit further back than nowadays but anyway it, it's a nice image. So why do I love aquilegias? Well there are a couple of reasons but first of all I want to say that I am a bit fussy about which aquilegias I allow in my garden and I'll tell you why in a minute. Well what I absolutely love about aquilegias is the sense of gaiety they bring to a garden when they dance in there in May and just flower casually everywhere and they're a plant that will set seed as well so this year you may have a couple and then next year you'll have maybe 10 and the year after that maybe 20 and I suppose we're talking here again about the downside because it's wonderful when you're starting out with the garden to have so much of a good thing but there does come a point when they can get a bit weedy and you're going to have to be selective about which ones you keep. Now aquilegias will tolerate a variety of garden soils and a variety of aspects. The only thing they mightn't tolerate so well is deep shade. So they can dance around a border, find their way somewhere else in your garden and it's all good to a certain extent. They're a hardy plant hardy in my part of the world anyway and completely deciduous so in winter there is nothing visible at all above the surface of the ground. And then in spring you can see the telltale foliage popping up here and there and that'll let you know that there's an aquilegia plant there or an aquilegia seedling that very soon is going to be pushing its way to the surface and coming into glorious flower for you. So it'll come as no surprise that in terms of maintenance what you need to do with aquilegias is to deadhead them once they've finished flowering and unless you do that you're going to find lots of seedlings popping up everywhere. So it's a simple enough task to just chop the head off and then you don't have seed in the garden. Now, in terms of aquilegia, there are a couple of species that I particularly love, but I'm completely besotted with the hybrids. Now in front of me here is a hybrid, and if we look closely, we can see that the flower heads are almost double the size of most species aquilegias so they produce the hybrids produce generally enormous flowers plus the flowers last for so much longer because the plant doesn't have to worry about setting seed and ensuring the longevity of its species it's a hybrid it's not going to set viable seed so it just flowers and flowers for the longest possible time and of course because it doesn't set seed it's never going to become a weed in the border. So with the hybrids like this wonderful glorious clump, clump specimen I have here, propagation is by division every couple of years where you can dig up a clump and divide it probably in quite early spring. Of course you can collect seed and sow seed as well. But unfortunately, aquilegia is one of these really weird plants where it is actually quite tricky to get them to germinate. If you leave it in your garden, it'll seed everywhere and it'll come up everywhere. But like Verbena venariensis, the same thing. You know, these plants need um, a dormancy and they're actually quite hard to get to germinate in a propagation tray in the greenhouse. But the species I absolutely love are aquilegia chrysantha which is yellow and glorious and has a really, really long spur at the back. And I also love any aquilegias that are pink and yellow. 
And I know this is mad, like normally I'm not the kind of gardener who will tolerate pink and yellow together in her garden, but when it's down to aquilegis, I just think they're the finest form. There's something about the shade of pink and yellow that the aquilegia puts together that makes them not so toe curling as other combinations might be elsewhere. So for me and aquilegia it's all about the spurs. The longer the spurs at the back of the flower the better and I love the original colours. I don't know if they're the original colours but I love the pink and the yellow together. I think they're just fantastic. Now there are a lot of new varieties that are unspurred like this blue one you see with me here and they're, I think they're bred for the colour because that really is a really nice blue colour and there's also the Barlow series which is kind of brown and white but again unspurred. Well there is some kind of spur at the back but it's not the really long thing that you see on this hybrid over here. So if you're fussy about that kind of thing then do look out for the spurred varieties. Okay, so that's my tuppence worth on aquilegias and the particular varieties that I like. What do you think? Which ones do you like? Some people are just weak at the knees whenever they see these kind of blue ones, so let me know below in the comments. And I guess that brings me to the end of this video about aquilegias in my series of a month of perennials. That'll be 30 videos in total, each one about a different good garden worthy perennial that I absolutely love and grow here in Duenza. I hope you like this video and if so, give it a thumbs up and check back for the others in the series. Thanks as always for watching and bye for now.